Welcome back everybody, Todd Huey here with Lone Star Boars and Huey Outdoors. It is now 2020 and we are going to try something new here. I am going to talk about the loadout that I use, the kit that I use. And how this is going to work is I'm going to set a round count, whether it's two, three, five hundred rounds. Once I get through that round count, I'm going to come back and talk to you about what I thought about the ammunition performance, rifle performance, suppressor performance, optic performance, and then we're going to switch it all up, new rifle, new ammunition, new optic, and new suppressor, and have a whole new package, and we'll go test that out and see how it works. Uh, first and foremost, I don't sell firearms, I don't sell suppressors, and I don't sell ammunition. This is just educational for farmers, ranchers, anybody that's having a feral hog problem. This is geared towards pest control and getting as many as possible in the shortest amount of time. I do sell night vision and thermal though. If you're in the market for night vision or thermal, you can find my webpage, HueyOutdoors.com, or you can contact me by phone at 817-668-1001. But no ammunition, no, no rifle, no suppressor sales. Now if you want a suppressor, Silencer Shop's the way to go. They're the best in the business. They take care of the paperwork. They have all, most of the suppressors. Very good people to deal with. All right, for this first one, first loadout video of 2020, we're going to be using the LWRC Reaper Mark II chambered in 308 with a 20 inch barrel. I have the CGS Hyperion suppressor on it, an Enforce WML Gen 2 white light or IR lights. I have the XP50 Pulsar Thermion on here. And in the back, which I've just recently started using these, found out about them. I've installed a JP silent spur capture spring, which I don't know how I didn't find these earlier. Now, you know, originally what I heard about these, you know, it takes, it gets rid of the, the cheese grater sound. It's really smooth sound, but on a Gucci rifle like this, there really wasn't a cheese grater sound, so I didn't notice that much difference on that end. But what I did notice is I was able to tune this with the different weights, the different spring strengths, along with the multi position gas block here to the ammunition. Now this 308 shoots smooth. It's almost like shooting a 300 blackout instead of a 308 and able to take very fast follow-up shots. All right, now we're gonna go to, oh, one more thing, one more thing. I left off the ammunition, which is a big part of this. So we're gonna do two 300 rounds with this. This is Wolf steel cased 140 grain soft point ammunition so we're going to go to the hunting footage now and if you want to hear what my opinions are on the ammo on the optic on the suppressor any of that gear at the end of the hunting footage i will talk and say what my final impressions were in this round count They're all you on that side. Nice, nice. I'm going to step out this way. Oh, that sounds mean down there. I can't see it. Is it behind that tree? Uh oh, I got one over here. He's behind a shit. Behind a tree. Oh, he just fell over. He's flopping. Dude, that I don't think could have gone any better. All right, I'm ready whenever you are. Oh. 
Oh, nice. Stay on them. Oh. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Look at all that blood. He's bleeding. You see all the blood coming out of him? God, look at all that blood. Yeah, he's done. Background, so don't shoot a deer. You ready? I'm gonna shoot this one to the left. You ready? Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Can't tell what's a deer and what's a pig. That sucked. Here comes one. Oh! Really nice. Do a little voiceover on this one to explain what's happening. I have pigs here under the trees eating acorns. They're going to end up running to the right, right into a herd of cattle grazing. Now, unfortunately, the cows are all up here on that tree line, and with the tree line there, the scope just didn't have the, the resolution, the ability to make it where I could see clearly if there was a cow there or not. I could see the pigs clearly, but I, I just couldn't tell enough to know if, I was, if there was cows behind them, and I wasn't comfortable shooting. So I only got four pigs out of this group. I got the first one. Uh, two runners and then a third one or a fourth one finally stops up there on the hill and I got a clean shot on it so that's what happens here ran into a tree. Shit. Hey, let's walk forward. Walk forward. They're coming right here. I'm off sticks. One ran smack into a tree down at the creek. You just shoot and I'll shoot after you shoot. Oh. We got quite a few. One, two, three, four, five. That last one that made it to the tree line, he took hits, but 
I'm just going to go ahead and pop this one on it. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Back to the rifle. Rifle performed, no malfunctions, performed beautifully as expected. I mean, these are really well built machines. Uh, piston operated, less gas, less dirt back on me. With the JP spring, like I said, and the adjustable gas block, this thing is super smooth. The suppressor, CGS Hyperion, this is the first I've used. It's only the first couple hundred rounds. Sounds good. Several people that I was hunting with commented on how quiet it is. It looks a lot like um, the Q-cans I have. It is, if you've seen the Trash Panda, or not the Trash Panda, the Thunder Chicken or the Full Nelson, this is about an inch, maybe a little bit longer, longer than those two. It's a thread-on can. I used Loctite to keep it on and keep it from coming loose. Um, it does sound good. I mean, it's not the same design. There's some differences inside on this suppressor versus the uh, Q-cans. So just because it looks like it on the outside does not mean everything on the inside is the same. And also with that extra inch, you have more volume, which helps with the sound. I am going to do a more in-depth review once I get it. Use it more, put it side by side by the Qs, and see how much, if I can notice an actual sound difference. Uh, the light didn't use it much this will be on several different rifles again this is for filming uh, it does work it switches from white light to infrared light the optic uh, XP 50 Thermion it replaced the trails trails are now gone if you want a the only way to get a trail now is to get the LRF if you want the laser rangefinder there is no laser rangefinder on the Thermions so if you want a, a trail or you want a laser rangefinder that's your option other than that, the, the standard scope now for Pulsar is this Thermion. On the XP50s, everything's the same except for the housing and the screen. The battery and the screen are the only thing different between an XP50 trail and the Thermion. Same lens, same internals. Because of this scope design, they use a smaller battery. You get an hour and a half to two hours less runtime than you did on the trail. The screen is an improvement. The screen is a color screen. You can use the goofy color palettes that are distracting, which nobody really uses, but that's not the point. The reticle, you can change the reticle to different colors, gives you a lot of contrast. You don't lose your reticle on the target. Uh, I really like being able to use the color reticles. And then the screen is just a higher quality, higher resolution screen. Even though everything's the same internally as far as 640 resolution, with this higher screen, it just looks sharper, it pops more. I think it's a better image. The scope performed fine for the money. This is a very, very good option. It, it, it does a lot for the money with the recording, rechargeable battery, focusable, all that. So there were times targets start getting a little bit further out, they start moving. You do have to focus this. Uh, there was one video clip in there where deer got mixed in with the hogs. I couldn't tell which one was a hog and which one was a deer, so I was hesitant to shoot. And then another time they got up on a ridge line where I knew there was cows, I could not see, tell whether the cows were in there with the trees or not. I think the the extra resolution of the Trigicon or the Envision with the BAE core and the bigger lens would have made that possible. But again, those are several thousand dollars more. If you're in the 5,000 and under range, this is the top of the line scope for you if you don't want a laser rangefinder. So good performance, very happy with it.
right, now to the ammunition. The Wolf 140 grain steel case soft point. The good paid, I think it was 34, 36 cents delivered to my door per round. So extremely cheap. The downside, it is, I think, way under powder, power. I think the powder they use is slow burning power, powder. In a 16 inch barrel, it was super slow. Even with this 20 inch barrel, and that's the reason I started with this 20 inch barrel is because of this ammo. Even with a 20 inch barrel, a Hornady American Whitetail 165 grain bullet out of the 16 inch barrel is going faster than this bullet is out of a 20 inch barrel. So we're talking about Hornady American, not super performance, not hand loaded hot, just plain American Whitetail 165 grain, a heavier bullet is going faster out of a shorter barrel than this. It's extremely dirty. In the couple of hundred rounds that I used in this test, this rifle got dirtier than rifles that I've shot for a year and put thousands of rounds through without cleaning. I had to clean this rifle thoroughly after using this. But it did work. Inside 100 yards, it is pretty good. I mean, it's expanding. It's, it's a lot of blood. It's hitting good especially if you hit up front now you start getting farther out the farther out the, the power just drops on these rapidly 200 yards um, it's not doing what what obviously more premium ammo would do but for the cost you can get a lot of these cheap if you're a farmer you're a rancher and you're shooting several hundred pigs a year these are going to save you money if you don't reload so overall I was happy with the whole package Guys, if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about these ser this series and how we're going to do this. I don't know what I'm going to use yet. I'm going to pick a different caliber, a different manufacturer, a different optic, and a different suppressor for the next set. And we will see how it goes. Thank you for watching. Please share.